I'm a huge fan of helping other people in my life yeah. know how to help me. <laughs> yeah. You know, like helping people understand how to help me. Um, so that means things like employing a healthy, proactive communication of what I want, what I need, what my boundaries are to the people around me that I need support from, being clear about the kind of support that I need or being clear in not knowing as well. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes I think it is okay to be like, I'm not sure exactly what I need right now, but like, let me percolate on it or let me think about it and let, yeah. and let you know. Or I don't know exactly what I right, want right now, but like, let's start with a hug. If you're happy with the same old ways of dating, if you enjoy sucking at communication, and you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But if you want some out-of-the-box ideas to deepen your current relationships, broaden your sexual horizons, develop a better understanding of yourself, or learn more about non-monogamy, then you've come to the right place. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And this is the Multiamory Podcast. On this episode of the Multi-Amory Podcast, we're talking about emotional support and emotionally supportive relationships, as well as the inverse, tropus lenoitome. I didn't what? think you'd actually commit to that. Yeah. What does that mean? What I actually mean to say is the inverse, which is emotional neglect, I guess, or a, or a lack of support. Codependence um, also. And, and codependence, I guess, too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. That's emotional support backwards. Felt backwards. Yeah. yeah. This is wow. a classic case of someone else wrote Jace's intro and Jace didn't proofread it. Oh, no, or... I did. And I liked it. Oh, so really? So I decided to stick with it. Yeah. I'm amazed. because You were just like, you... how do I actually say this? Usually you hate the things I write. Oh, that is <laughs> not <in> general. true. <laughs> <laughs> no, but usually, yeah, I guess for our listeners at home, usually one of these two writes the intro for me and tries mm -hmm. to get me to stumble over it. Or, I usually or... don't. No, it's not trying it's to get mostly, you to stumble over it. It's dedicated. like trying to get you to just be aware and be careful. <laughs> oh, I see. Of being I tricked. See. I see. It's yes. like that thing that your sibling does. And it's like, no, I just trip you when you're running down the hall to like teach you exactly. to be careful. Yeah, she's exactly. And to teaching watch you a your lesson. Surroundings. Exactly. Yes. Okay. It's for your own good, Jace. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Speaking of other things for your own good, I'm going to rant at you and at Emily okay. and at myself and at all the listeners. It's just a general rant. Um, on the ephemeral nature mm -hmm. of words and word definitions, because... Correct me if I'm wrong, Emily, but I think like the inspiration for this episode was trying to get to the, to the bottom of like, what is emotional support? It seems like that's a word or a phrase that means very different things to different people. Absolutely. Right in that? Yeah. Yeah. And some people that I've heard of like how they're, they support their partners and how their support, their partners support them. I'm like, wow, that's really kind of overboard in my mind, but maybe mm. to them that's normal. So, yeah, right. what, what what do you think it means to you? Well, just to, to build on that, I think mm -hmm. you can also see the opposite of seeing a relationship where it feels like that person seems like they're not they're not giving the kind of support that I would need in a relationship. When yeah. Maybe that is what works for those two people. You know, um, I just want to put it out there just at the very beginning that there's some words that get tossed around a lot when talking about relationships and especially with relationship advice. Words like support or respect or honor or sometimes even honor my wife. Yeah. Or sometimes even like prioritize. And it's, it's mm -hmm. like these are very subjective words, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and sometimes to a dangerous degree because it's, you know, you can very easily get into a disagreement over feeling like, well, I feel like you're not supportive enough of me. Yeah. And the other person being like, I feel like I'm totally supportive of you, you know, and, and it could be a number of things. It could be just kind of like the language of support that you're using with each other is just mismatched or something like that. Mm. But I'm just saying that like, there isn't really a universal definition that applies in all scenarios of what support or respect means. So I'm just going to put it out there at the very top of the episode. What I like to encourage people to do is, chase the specific concrete needs that you have rather than chasing a word or a label. Yeah. Um, and if you're finding yourself in a situation where you're frustrated that it's like, well, I've asked my partner for support and they're not giving it. That might mean it requires a little bit of some critical analysis of like, okay, well, what does support mean to me? What are the specific behaviors? What do I need to see? What do I want to hear? What, you know, as opposed to just 
putting out this blanket thing of I need you to support me without being clear on what that means. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah. for some people that could be totally different than for someone else. Yeah. Even within partnerships, clearly. Definitely. Right. Yeah. And that's true with a lot of different things, too, where it's like you could look at another couple and go like, that's really cute that they have that together. But I actually don't think I would be very happy with that type of relationship, whether mm -hmm. it's like how spontaneous they are mm -hmm. or it's how um, how emotionally supportive they are. You might be like, whoa, I actually want more space than that. Yeah. Whereas another person might look at you and your relationships that you think are great and go gosh, I feel like I wouldn't be getting any affection from my partner mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. whatever, right? It's like the point isn't here's one correct way to do it. The point is let's let's explore what this means and kind of how to how to understand these things so yeah. you can find what works for you. Right. Yeah. So I did find a fairly good definition of what emotional support in a relationship is. Um, this is from liveyourtruestory.com, which is, you know. <laughs> All right something quite a domain isn't it yeah okay and they say a supportive relationship is a relationship which brings mutual benefit to both parties helping them to cope with the tough times and maximize the good times simply put a supportive relationship enables you to achieve more than you ever could on your own hmm. all right I like yeah that. i like it I like yeah that. i like that there's kind of some fundamentals of mutuality in yeah. the support I mean, I do think like if you have a partnership that really kind of pushes you in a way to be the best version of yourself and by pushing or whatever like that is an, a form of support, I do think that that kind of can encapsulate what this is talking about to a degree um, and just like someone who is there for you when times get tough right. and can kind of help pull you out of that if need be. Right. And definitely. that you, you know, mutually do the same yeah. for them. Well, so we felt that it was maybe best to start chipping away at what is emotional support and what mm -hmm. is an emotionally supportive relationship. First, by looking at some of the things that are not <laughs> emotional support or are not <clears throat> supportive or mutually supportive relationships. Yeah. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is codependent relationships. Let's have a show of hands. Who here has been in a codependent relationship? I'm putting up both my hands. Yeah. Yeah. Hands all around. Woo, Woo. I mean, who hasn't? Let's be honest. Any good <clears throat> stories? I, honestly, I feel like every relationship I was in from age zero to maybe age 27 was, mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. pretty darn codependent. I think especially in my kind of pre-non-monogamy days, because I think that that was just what I thought a relationship was. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We are kind of taught this romanticized idea of you know, you complete me or kind of like, I'm nothing without you. These sorts of things that we think of as very romantic, but are kind of at their core, very codependent. Yeah. Yeah. I did hear a podcast recently where like it w it's with a couple, I'm not going to name what it is, but it's with a couple that does the podcast together. And the uh, husband was like, yeah, I've been obsessed with her like since we were 12 years old. Mm. And I'm like, OK, like the word obsessed <laughs> is interesting right. and maybe potentially can be viewed as codependent because mm. this this was also like kind of the impetus for this episode for me wanting to think about this episode is uh, that, you know, their relationship is kind of one of like, well, let's give a lot of gifts and let's, you know, be super extravagant in what we're doing for each other or or that he has to be really extravagant and like over overly like telling her how amazing she is and giving her a ton of compliments and showering her with gifts. And I do think that some people think that like that is support mm. or that is being like mm. a, a wonderful, supportive, like loving, caring partner. And yeah, again, I'm like, mm, I don't know. Is that I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. I guess it kind of depends on their experience in the relationship, yeah. you know, because like maybe that is the perfect level of mutual support yeah. that the two of them feel OK maintaining. Or maybe it's really exhausting for both of them and they feel obligated. But that's yeah. just kind of the level that things have gotten to, perhaps. Yeah. Mm. OK. Yeah. yeah. So a codependent relationship. Let's kind of break down what that is exactly. Um so one of the things that it can do, it is characterized by unhealthy clinginess, clinginess um, a lack of autonomy, a lack of self-sufficiency, or um, autonomy in one or both partners. Mm -hmm. So not just like, yeah, autonomy for the whole, but also like if one person has that, then potentially 
Mm -hmm. that can equal a codependent relationship yeah so it's so it doesn't necessarily have to be one-sided it could be both people feeling equally like they're disempowered or that they don't have an autonomy or that they're both yeah it's always us 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 yeah Yeah. or or the idea of just like we're mutually completely dependent upon each other for our emotional well-being yeah you know or any decision making or whatever yeah um a codependent relationship can also include a major imbalance in the level of support that is given so as in situations where one-sided kind of thing yeah where it's one-sided or maybe it's not quite so mutual um or if you're giving support to a partner at the expense of your own mental health emotional well-being physical health or financial health as well oh yeah yeah i've definitely done that one yeah yeah so the idea that it's like you're kind of draining yourself in order to support this partner and you're not getting much back. Not that it's necessarily like a one-to-one transactional thing, but that systemically it's like, there's just this constant major imbalance that is, uh, that is depleting me. Yeah. That's depleting me as a person. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was actually just, um, earlier today in kind of looking up stuff about this episode. Um, I was looking at, a thing from um, Safe People, which is by Cloud Townsend. Huh. Uh, I can't Wait, remember if book that's or one. what. Uh, I think Safe People might be the title of the book, actually. Mm. Um, but it's it's a very very Christian um, oh. book in, in the way that it's written here. But I was just looking through their site and looking at their description of what a safe person is, and that mm. like you you want safe people in your life, one who is connected to God. Uh, well, yeah, that is, that I mean, is, I'm assuming that is on the from, list, you know, but, but like, okay, like religion aside, the yeah. things on it are things like, um, you know, someone who accepts me just like I am mm. someone who loves me no matter how I'm being or what I do. And I'm like, oh, okay, uh, sure. Lord. Like that's a little blankety. Um, yeah. And then, you know, gives me an opportunity to grow. Great. Who increases love within me. Great. I can be myself around. Great. But then there was this one that was um, someone who helps me to deny myself for others and God. Wait, what does that even mean? That makes my ears perk up a little bit. Right. Not not in a good way. (laughs) Not in a good way. It was just a little bit like, ooh, yikes. And then there's a few others that are a little bit on that, like, wait, what do you mean by this? Denies myself what? Deny myself, I, I assume, means like to deny my own desires or my own okay. wants for the sake mm, of other people on that. or for God. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, it's just these things that to, to someone who maybe errs on the side of being a little more selfish, I'm like, okay, maybe that's a good influence in their life. But for a person who errs more on the codependent side of things, mm. who does, or, or on the like overly self-sacrificing side, mm, yeah. I look at this list and I'm like, wow, This book that sold hundreds of thousands of copies is teaching people to bring people into their lives who will make that worse. Hmm. Um, So anyway, I guess just I brought that up just as a way to point out like that a lot of the conventional wisdom out there and the popular advice that that like I had a counselor recommend that book to me years ago. Really? Yeah, that's why I knew about it at all. Um, That there's some stuff that's like, it really depends on your situation. Like you do have to kind of evaluate what those things really mean for you um because it it might sound very healthy to one person and to another person could end up being very unhealthy yeah right i think it also requires a certain level of self-awareness of your own baggage of your own what kind of just like your own style of being or your style of being in a relationship like if you know that you tend to end up in codependent relationships or if you know that you tend to end up being the person who just gives, 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 Mm -hmm. you know, to the point of total depletion. Like sometimes having that awareness in the first place can be really helpful as well. Yeah. And this, I I found this one is definitely a case where I've seen myself do this. I've seen partners do this and I've seen other people do this where it's like give, give, give support at the cost of your emotional, physical and financial well-being and that that support isn't even really supporting the other person very well. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. That it's like, like in what way? Well, it's like I'm giving a bunch of my resources, whatever those are, yeah. to support you. And maybe that's not the kind of support you actually need. Mm. Right. It's that like giving it 
because we're taught like, oh, the self-sacrificingness of giving this is what makes it good. Yeah. Rather than the impact of it being what makes it good, you right. know, like rather than actually looking at what is going to give the best benefit to the other person. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and I'm, I'm I stop myself from going on a big rant about missionary work. Um, oh, that's... It's a good metaphor, though. Think it's about it. It's a whole other podcast, about it. I love. Yeah. Um, all right. So the last thing we want to talk about this with the supportive uh, relationships versus codependent ones is on uh, WebMD, actually. They had a thing about codependent relationships. And I actually really liked this list of questions to ask yourself to identify if you might be in a codependent relationship. Uh, and there's just three of them. The first one is... Are you unable to find satisfaction in your life mm. outside of a specific person? Yeah, mm. that's pretty pretty I've, big. I've definitely experienced that one before. Really? Mm. Well, it's and I think NRE really lends itself yeah. to this yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of that's that a just good point. like nothing is enjoyable, nothing is worthwhile outside of this specific person. Yeah. Um, second one is: Do you recognize unhealthy behaviors in your partner, but you stay mm. with them in spite of those things? Yeah. Um, I think that's a big one that a lot of, of us, us have, been there. have yeah. fallen into. Yeah. Uh, and then the third one is, are you giving support to your partner at the cost of your own mental, emotional, or physical health? Mm -hmm. So that's the one we were just talking about. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. But I just liked how simple those questions were and how much they're directed at yourself. Yeah. It's not about like, oh, from the outside, are there X, Y, Z symptoms? It's like, no. What about for you? What's your experience? Yeah, it's also not about, we talked about this in the episode that we did about narcissism, that mm -hmm. it's also not about trying to figure out, is my partner a narcissist? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it's literally just about what is the impact on you? Yeah. Yep. That's yep. what we care about. We don't care about, do we don't need to examine your partner's motivations. Are they a bad person? Are they a good person? Are they doing things intentionally? Are they not? Like, it's just focusing on you. Yeah. So yeah, I think those are good, simple questions. Yeah. And that's really powerful, a powerful position to be put in because, or put yourself in rather, because then you are <laughs> the one who is the deciding factor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like anything about them per se. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we also want to talk about how to recognize a lack of support in your relationships, because again, I definitely have heard people say like, I feel like I'm really supportive in this relationship, but I feel like my partner isn't necessarily, or I'm not getting like the emotional support that I want from them. You mm. know, X, Y, Z, it could be a number of things, mm. but uh, ways to recognize a lack of support um, might include dismissing or minimizing your experience or feelings. So this almost falls into like the gaslighting territory to it, me. It could. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Could. That's like maybe like an extra extreme version yeah. of this. It doesn't have to go that far. Yeah. Sure. I think that there are degrees of gaslighting. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but, but I think but there's definitely some overlap in that Venn diagram there. Yeah. I think it can a little bit. And again, you know, this just kind of means like if you have a experience with your partner or they say something, for example, that irks you in a bad way. And you even even just ask like kindly about like, hey, you know, I felt X when you said Y. Can we talk about that a little bit? And they're like, no, no, it really was nothing. Like you mm -hmm. didn't feel that, or or that was dumb to feel that, or something along those lines. Like minimizing your experience. Right. I feel like I have to catch myself to stop myself from doing this to partners, mm -hmm. honestly, because I think that in my family of origin, a lot of like problem solving was kind of like dismissing or minimize someone's yeah. feelings. So kind of like trying to logic them out of yeah, that's feeling really bad about point. something, <laughs> yeah. you know, which has its place, but most of the time doesn't have its place when someone's reaching out to you for support. <laughs> I've Even learned. just calling yeah. like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, something that I heard a lot growing up, I feel like was like, well, you're victimizing yourself. Mm, interesting. And like that word is very powerful, I think. Be yeah. and, and I, I almost want to do an episode on like what that means, like mm. to be a victim versus victimizing yourself. And that mm. sound that that could be some rocky territory there, but I'd really be interested to know like more about that where that fine line is hmm. because I do think, yeah, I mean, obviously like you can have an emotion and that can be more internal. That can be because of an internal thing that has happened to you in the past or whatever. But there's also, you know, like, Hey, like that really was unnecessary for you to say, 
kind of thing Mm -hmm. and know my feelings in this moment are valid. Yeah. So respect them. I think so. I want I'd want to just add to this list. I think, you know, dismissing your feelings, minimizing your feelings or experience or also trying to logic away your feelings. Yeah. I think would be included in this list. Similar type. Yeah. And again, like, especially when it comes to logicking away, I don't think that always comes from a bad place. Um, but it definitely doesn't help things, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It could even come from a helpful place, but, but is, and that's a good example of kind of what I was trying to bring up before about you might feel like you're giving a lot of support hmm. and even feel like put out by how much support you're giving, but that may, the effect of that may actually be not supportive at all. Yeah. That's, right. that's actually a, a decent example of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, another one here about a lack of support is, um, a partner who defaults to competitiveness rather than encouragingness. Encouraging-ness? Encur- I think it's encouragement is what we say in the English language. Yeah. Encouragingness. You know what? <clears throat> As a native speaker of English, I can do whatever I want. Wow. Okay. It's all right. <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> I see. Um, yeah, just that, that it's like, if something goes well for you, they need to one up you or mm-hmm. they need to come up with a way that they've experienced something better than that already. Yeah. Or like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I've had something more so than that. that this yeah. definitely can come up in <clears throat> multi-partner relationships or non-monogamous oh, relationships, yeah. Sure, yeah. especially yeah. when two people are kind of trying to date at the same time. Mm. That, yeah. that This can come up sometimes unintentionally. Yeah. I think usually unintentionally. I think mm-hmm. usually the person doing this, again, doesn't know that they're doing it. They might even think, oh, I'm, I'm relating to you by sharing my feelings about that and like how much that means to me, but it actually feels like, well, you're just focused on you and not helping me celebrate this thing that went well for me. Yeah. 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 Um, Another sign that there may be a lack of support in your relationship is if your partner routinely talks over you or interrupts you. Um, (sighs) Yeah. This is a real bad one. It's yeah. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Um, And again, with many of these things, it's like, we've all been guilty of doing it to a partner at some point. And so that's why it's important to look at like, is this routine? Is this habitual? Is this a pattern? Um, So yeah, talking over you, like if a partner is truly invested in supporting you, they will want to hear your side of things and they will want to hear your story and they will, you know, ideally want to give that space for that to, for that to exist, you know, instead of kind of, again, talking over or, or, or doing all these things like diminishing or minimizing or things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then to kind of keep going through these circles of anti-emotional support hell, Uh I suppose, um, is if the relationship is emotionally neglectful or emotionally abusive. And we're going to talk quickly about the differences between neglect and abuse because there is some overlap, but they're not necessarily the same thing. Okay, so neglect will be a pattern or a habit of a partner refusing or withdrawing support. So again, like we said about the previous things, we're all guilty of being emotionally neglectful at times, uh, but we definitely want to emphasize the like systemic nature of neglect or of, you know, withdrawing support, um, the habitual like pattern that can happen in some relationships. Yeah. And that's the thing to kind of look for. Yes. If you're wondering like, hey, am I being neglected here? Am I just like thinking that this is something that's happening? Is it all in my head? Or is this actually something that I need to look at? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yes. Yeah. So I was just going to give some examples that emotional neglect, you know, habitual emotional neglect could look something like, Anytime the two of you have a disagreement, your partner shuts down and then refuses Mm. to talk about it ever again. And we kind of just pretend that it never happened and never existed. Mm. Or when you're going through a rough time, this person's nowhere to be found. Like routinely, they just kind of check out and they're not around. Yeah. You know, during the hard times. Yeah. So things like that. Yeah, totally. So, okay, then abuse is also a pattern or a habit of a partner doing things to harm you emotionally. But this can look like things well, like... But it's doing things rather than not doing things, right? Yeah. I mean, it. yeah, it's a it's a habit of a partner doing things to harm you emotionally. Mm-hmm. Um, correct. So this can include things like name calling or guilt tripping or coercion, ultimatums, stuff like that. Yeah. 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 So Maybe gaslighting fall... yeah. can fall under yeah. this too. So that can fall into the emotional abuse category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I feel like the, the point 
that we were trying one to make is, is not doing and one is doing right that that's kind of the difference um you could have a mix of both in a relationship honestly sure. for yeah. sure yeah, yeah. one yeah. can True. be neglectful and abusive yeah oh joy the extent so not, the powers yeah. of human beings is just yeah. amazing yeah. wow yeah although I, we do want to say kind of like dedeker was mentioning at the beginning of the episode that the point of this isn't to be like, oh, well, you need to figure out if you fit enough of these symptoms to diagnose mm. your partner or your relationship mm -hmm. as being emotionally neglectful or, or abusive or whatever it is, but rather to keep the focus on what is your experience of it. Mm -hmm. And if that is an unhealthy or a, just a bad experience, then that's enough of a reason to get out of it. You don't yeah. need to like be sure it fits some other definition to either change that relationship or remove yourself from that relationship. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. So we, I like to believe we've kind of chipped away at what emotional support is not, or yeah. some clues that you might look out for. Not. <laughs> not. God bless it. You too. <laughs> Sorry. I did uh -huh. not. Okay. Uh, we chipped away at the qualities of what emotionally supportive relationships are not some clues for you to be able to see like, Oh, maybe there's a lack of support here. I'm being emotionally neglected, or maybe it's a codependent relationship. What are the qualities of an actually healthy supportive relationship? How does one actually give emotional support to your partner in a way that's good? So the challenge with this list here, <laughs> I'm realizing is that we have a number of things that are kind of written in the negative Hmm. So I'm going to mm. challenge us to try to come up with what's the positive of okay. that. All right. Okay. So, so here's the first one on the list is that you don't take responsibility for their entire life. Okay. So you to turn this into a positive statement. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Wait, well, you allow yeah. them to, you allow them to live their beautiful life <laughs> and are happy and grateful when it also includes you. Hmm, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. That's a good place to start. So I like pulled you, that one way up out of my ass. You allow so. your partner to have autonomy and responsibility for their own life. No, yeah, that, yeah. that sounds better. Or like yeah. you support your partner in making their own decisions and taking action in their own mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, something mm -hmm. like that. Something yeah. Like that. Anyways, you can get from from what we're getting at here is that the point of this is that supporting someone isn't doing things for them. Yeah. It isn't telling them what they need to do and expecting it them to do it. It isn't solving all their problems all the time. Exactly. It's not giving them all the answers as if you have them, but right. It's not, <laughs> it's not about be honest. you being like, well, this, the, I'm responsible for this person's life. So I'm just gonna have to do it all for them. Yeah. Right. Instead, allowing them to live their own life and be there to support them in doing that. Um, the next one here is this one is a positive. So this is respecting feelings, respecting their feelings. So allow for and proactively empathize with your partner's feelings, even if they're not the same as your feelings. Yeah. And we wanted to talk a little bit about what that means. Yeah. So you, Dedeker, like had a really awesome thing to say about this. Yeah. This it is kind of blew my mind. Something that I, I believe this come from, comes from the Gottmans. Don't quote me on that. Ye old Gottman. From ye olde Gottmans. Um, but something that they encourage people to try on when they're in a disagreement with their partner um, is to inject empathy into it. And so as in, I don't know, let me try to think of a situation. Can we think of some kind of argumentative situation <clears throat> where my feelings were hurt, other person's feelings were hurt? Can we come up with an example? Um, okay. Uh, like, Jace, you, I don't know. I this thought you were great. going somewhere. Yeah, I really thought this that is, had so much problems. Is, okay, yeah. uh, let's let me <laughs> so let me do some low props. hanging fruit. Let's say I go out on a date. Yeah, I uh, um, maybe Jace was expecting me back home at a certain mm. time, or expecting me to mm. communicate that I was on the way back home at a certain time, but I didn't. Yeah, um, great. But I came, but I did come back home. Like I said that I would, but Jace is feeling kind of upset or hurt or mm. lost or whatever. Um, and so we get into an argument about that because maybe Jace's perspective <laughs> is like. Well, I was worried about you, or I was concerned about you, or I didn't know what was going to happen. I was expecting you back at a certain time. And maybe my perspective is like, hey, I told you I was going to be home. I didn't commit to a certain time. Yeah. You know, I don't like, I don't know why you have to be so upset about that. You know that I'm coming home and that I'm fine, you know, yada, yeah. yada, yada. Okay. You can, you can imagine it in your head. And some of you listening have probably been in this very same scenario. Yeah. Um, 
So clearly my feelings about the situation are different from Jace's feelings about the situation. Mm -hmm. But I can still empathize with my partner's feelings, even if they don't align with my own, even if I don't think that his perception of the situation is the same as I perceived it. Yeah. So it could be something like, well, Jace, if I were in your shoes and if I also was sitting there like thinking about, you know, worried that I got into a car crash (laughs) or worried that some I'd run across some kind of bad person or the person that I was on a date with was a bad person was taking advantage of me. It's like something bad had happened. I would also feel that same level of worry that you do. So kind of like, oh, if I perceive the situation the way that you did, yeah, I also would feel worried. It's totally understandable that you would feel worried and concerned and upset. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? And maybe, I don't know, what would be the inverse of that, Jace, if you were kind of doing the same thing to me in that scenario? I guess on the other side, it, yeah, it would be the just like, well, if my experience of it were that I knew I was fine and I was out having fun and I knew we didn't have any specific plans, um, then it would seem like an extra hour or two wouldn't matter. Mm. And so it was more important to, you know, be in the moment and, and enjoy the time that I had instead of rushing home for no reason. Yeah. Something right. like that. I don't know. Yeah. Or or if I believed or I guess you could even say like if I were in your position and I believed that I wouldn't be worried about it. If you know, if I believed <laughs> that the other person wouldn't be worried about it, then I would, I would probably stay out too. Totally and understand not, and make not the same decisions or whatever. Deal. Yeah. So, so I think this that's kind the of a, key part yeah. there. I know this is kind of a coupled together <laughs> example, so thank you for your patience in this. Uh-huh. Um but yeah, it's kind of this idea of being able to acknowledge to your partner th- basically that their feelings are valid. Yeah. Even if you don't feel that same exact way. I, yeah, I, and they're I, heard. I thought of another example okay. of this that, that oh, I okay. feel like maybe even fits more with what we're trying to say. <clears throat> and this is, um, say you're having, say you're having an argument with your partner um, or like some kind of a heated discussion. And one of you uh, says fuck in that conversation. And the person who said fuck, that's like, whatever, that's a thing they would say in this kind of conversation. Mm. But to the other person, that's like... Felt like an attack? Feels like an attack. Or it's 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 triggering. If if you say that word, that means there's no coming back from this. This is, we've gone so far into like hating each other that you would say that word. And I think this is a good example of where the way this conversation goes will often end up going is then the person gets upset about them saying fuck or, or whatever it was that, that, you know, they reacted so badly to, um, and being upset about it. And the other person saying like, you shouldn't be upset about that. It's just fuck. And the other person being like, no, that's terrible. Like I should be really upset about that. I can't believe you said that. And the other person saying like, what are you talking about? That's ridiculous. And like, what is missing here is that empathy like Dedeker was talking about of going, wait a minute, explain to me what your perception of this is so I can understand it. And then it's the like, to me, that word means this, you know, like that was only ever said in my family when things were just really bad. awful. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then it's like, Oh yeah, I could understand if that word meant that to me, I would feel the same way as you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then on the other side too, it's like, that's just a word I say, like that I say with my friends and, past partners and you know whatever it's like so not a big deal and the other person can say huh like if i felt that way about that word if it was like saying fiddlesticks to me <laughs> I-, I could see why I- I- why he would say it and mm-hmm. it wouldn't be upsetting to me and it's that example of like by taking that time to yeah. understand why they feel that way it at least gives you a place to understand each other from Rather than it's like it's like you're trying to argue whether something should or shouldn't be mm, when you're right. both seeing the world completely differently. Yeah. Like right, you're totally. watching you're watching two different movies and you're trying to argue about some quality of the protagonist yeah. or something like Kinda that. Kind of reminds me of switch tra- tracking a little bit, but a little bit. I think it's yeah. related. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely it related. related. I think it's also related to uh, we've talked about this a couple times on the show about um, like competing narratives or competing mm. realities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this idea that Very you both much, perceive yeah. things differently. Yeah. Um, and and that like we can get so caught up in trying to get the other person to 
agree that our perception was the right one Mm -hmm. and that their perception was the wrong one rather than kind of accepting that it's like, oh, both of these perceptions can be valid and we can find a common ground here and and shared empathy. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like we don't even realize there is another perception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's just like you assume they think of things they perceive things the same way you do. And then it's like, how the hell did you have that emotional response there, yeah. to this thing? Yeah. Right. It doesn't make any sense. What are you doing? Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. All right. Another like affirmative thing is to compliment your partner in public. Um, that is a sign of a healthy and supportive relationship or even just like avoiding humiliation or put downs in public. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think you probably shouldn't humiliate or put your partner down. In general. Period, yeah. 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 But definitely like not in public. That's mm-hmm. kind of a rough one. Yeah. The public like adds a whole other mm-hmm. level to it, you know? Yeah. Both yeah. in the good way and the bad way. Yeah. Like I think doing compliments in front of other people is I know. Big. It's like, oh wow. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. That's mm-hmm. really sweet yeah. of you to do for me. Yeah. 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 Um how yeah, well this says never ignoring a partner's presence, but how can how we, we make, make that, that into positive? like an yeah, a positive? Well, uh, I'm going to keep making it negative and just say that this also <laughs> kind of means like don't stonewall your partner. Yeah. You mm. know? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But like to make this positive, it's like... Acknowledging their presence. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like being sweet to them in public, maybe even. Or just like... I guess I imagine this one more as about, about being in private. But mm. I guess it could apply in public too. Yeah. But well, just that, like, I'm doing a thing and I'm just going to pretend you don't exist right yeah, now. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, the scenarios when stonewalling behavior comes up. And it's usually well, when you're, like, angry or upset or there's a disagreement mm-hmm. or you're fighting. And, like, that's when the stonewalling behavior comes up and where you're just moving through the house, you know, not looking yeah, at like, each other or coming into a room, not looking at each other. Yeah. Um, so I guess the opposite of that can be is, like, even if you're upset with each other, still being able to acknowledge and treat each other like human beings. Well, if, like, someone comes home from a long day and instead of like you know it maybe get up and and greet them and say hi and mm-hmm. like look away from your computer for a couple minutes kind of thing and just like acknowledge their presence mm-hmm. yeah that too yeah it, this reminds me of the Gottman's thing about the turning toward mm-hmm. is what they call yeah. it and they talk a lot about the importance of that what emily just described is that moment of i'm gonna stop what I'm doing right yeah. now to acknowledge you or, or even to be... like put your phone down. Right. Like don't <laughs> yeah. just like, if you're watching something together, don't just like play a fucking video game on your phone. Mm-hmm. Like, sure. You know, yeah. like kind of maybe cuddle yeah. your partner or like show that you care about them and care about like the thing that you two are doing together in that right. moment. Yeah. yeah. And that's not to say you can never do those things, but sure, it's just but... putting that emphasis on, turning toward yeah right and again we're talking about like those systemic kind of Mm. you know cyclical things the patterns Mm -hmm. yeah 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 um another quality of a healthy supportive relationship is respecting the other person's right and ability to make their own decisions um this is related to the stuff we were talking about earlier with like not taking responsibility for someone else's entire life and so Mm a kind of a good litmus test for this is if you find that you're able to offer advice to your partner without it being conditional, as in you can offer advice to your partner and they have the ability to disregard it if they want. Mm. And that's, that's I feel like that's a real tricky one. And I feel like this comes up so often. Um, But it's, but it is that ability to like support this person in their own decision-making as opposed to supporting this person in, trying to push an agenda on them of like, well, I think they should do this, you know, and I'm going to push them into doing this, or I'm going to push them into making this particular kind of decision. Yeah. Yeah. That's scary. (laughs) It's scary to, to, I think to trust that like this person will make decisions both in their own interest and in the interest of you and your relationship as well. Yeah. It's like, um, what I feel like this is one that's easy to, fall into the trap of thinking you're doing this when you're not. Hmm. And that's like someone's, you know, having to make a decision or isn't sure what to do about something. And you're like, well, you should do this. Like, it just makes sense that you do this. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but you Hmm. should do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, (laughs) that's uh, very different. Thanks for being so supportive. Right. 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 You're, you're, you're able to tell yourself like, oh yeah, I'm letting them make their own decision. And they could, you know, and if they say like, I just feel like you're telling me what to do. You're like, no, you can make your own decision. 
But what but you're you really saying is, do this. you're really yeah. saying like you could make the wrong decision if you want, but <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you the right one. <laughs> yeah. That's a very right. different thing. Right. Totally. Yeah. So when we were researching this, we came across, well, so we came across this thing called the imaginary friend exercise. Yeah. That I'm going to let Jason. the Jace, title of it? Yeah, that's what it's called. And it was, <laughs> uh, initially it was about um, helping someone who is, who wants to be supportive in a relationship, but they're worried about being codependent mm-hmm. or about getting like too invested in supporting this person and to, you know, again, to an unhealthy extent. Okay. So can you tell us about imaginary friends? Basically it starts out as you picture yourself as an imaginary friend to this other person. And I know that that right away might sound codependent when like your entire existence is dependent upon them (laughs) believing in you. That's not really what we're getting at here. Um, But the point is that if you think about an imaginary friend, an imaginary friend is there to, to support and to help you out and to be a friend, but it can't do things for you Mm. because it is you. you, Well, because you're not real, right? Like if you are the imaginary friend, like you're not a physical being. So your job is not to go in and do things for them. Yeah. Right. It's not to solve the problems for them. Um, Another thing is that um, as an imaginary friend, you are kind of part of their own brain So your job is not to give them answers or to give them information that they don't have or tell them what to do. Instead, as the imaginary friend, your job is to just get them to think about it, ask them questions they need to be asked. Maybe make like a therapist. (laughs) Kind of, yeah. Like make some suggestions um, and listen to them and like help them kind of reflect back to themselves what they're trying to work on. So the idea, correct me if I, if I've gotten Uh, this wrong, I think the idea behind the imaginary friend exercise is this is like, like a litmus test to test, to see like, okay, am I, am I supporting the way imaginary friend would, as in with listening, with encouraging, um, with encouraging their own thinking and with encouraging them to make their own decisions, Mm -hmm. or am I straying into more codependent or maybe even controlling territory of trying to dictate what they do or trying to solve all their, all their problems. Um, but it's a litmus test. It's not like, (laughs) Hey, just pretend to be your partner's imaginary friend. (laughs) And, and that's the rest of your life now. Yeah. So could be a fun role play. Just saying. Like a sexual role play? Yeah, you know, just for fun. And this is my imaginary friend. What? Oh, I mean, I, I guess if you're involving well, another person in it, but... Oh, well... I feel like I mean, I just... Like, use your imagination. All right. Come on. Well, I yeah. do, but I... Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. The last time I had an imaginary friend, I think I was like six or something. And sure. so it's hard for me to suddenly bring that into any kind of weird sexual realm. So you just kind of... Wait. Baked my noodle a little bit, as it were. Baked yeah. my noodle. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you didn't have to make it weird. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to bring <laughs> this right, back to the exercise. Let's move on. Yeah. Use this as a litmus test. Please don't use it as a tool for running your life or or for actually creating a relationship. Just yeah. as a litmus test for the support that you're a, offering. a cute little thought exercise. Okay. Yeah. okay, please don't fuck your imaginary friends. You Maybe. can if you want. They're your well, imaginary hang on, friends. Hang on. If you make up someone... Okay, as an adult, if you make okay. up someone that you fantasize about... Is that like a sexual imaginary friend? I've definitely had some of those. Like a made up person? Like a made up person, yes. That's mm. an interesting question. Yeah. I don't, I mean, are they, are they your friend? Would well, Eva they're... Green be my sexual imaginary friend? Okay, well, but okay. she's a real person. But yeah, That's I'm thinking of not real, oh, not real people. Oh, um, well... <laughs> yeah. well, I fantasize about not real people all the time. I, I think one one other part of this actually is the, the friend part. And that's actually one of these here is that you're an imaginary friend. You're not an imaginary judge or an imaginary critic. Mm. Yeah. And God knows we've got those Does two. He? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we've got those two, right? We've got plenty of imaginary critics or imaginary judges. Right. But you're an imaginary friend. But they're all us. Yeah. But they're all they're all us, yes. That's the yeah. the kicker. Yeah. But I'm I guess I'm saying with your imaginary fantasy person. Uh, are they a friend or maybe there's something else? Imaginary imagine- friend with benefits. Yeah, my imaginary there we go. friend yeah. with benefits look like Eva Green, though. Uh, sure, sure, if you yeah, want. I guess, yeah. I guess, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Okay. All right, so when all of this is said and done and you are going through a tough time, I think it is very practical and good to learn how to receive emotional support well, Hmm. Um, especially when you're going through like a really challenging time in your life. 
So the first step of this is to allow your partner's support and kindness to give you a chance to kind of step outside of yourself and, you know, the particular challenge that you're going through. Um, I think that this kind of ties into the next one, which I'm going to talk about, which is gratitude. I know like a lot of kind of self-help things out there talk about gratitude being a really big thing. Um, you know, like even just like writing down what did, what was it just like three things every single day that you're grateful for? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even if it's just like, wow, like today in Los Angeles was a perfect day. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. glorious outside. Right. You know, I'm going to Chicago in a couple of days and it's going to be in the 30s. Jeez. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Ooh, you boy. know, way different than that. I am so grateful for the, you know, beauty of being outside. Mm -hmm. And then also like when your partner is really good and compassionate and supportive of you, be like, wow, like. You know, my I have someone in my life who is being so wonderful and lovely to me. And it allows you to, like, think outside of, like, the challenge that you're going through. Like, mm -hmm. if, you know, something mm -hmm. really hard happened at work and you can't stop thinking about it and it made you feel really bad. It's like, wow, like, my partner is taking the time to, like, really be there for me. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's like using the support itself as another thing to think about instead yeah. of just dwelling on the things that are not good in your life. Exactly. Cause I think, yeah, like, especially when some of us like get in a state of, you know, being really down, it's easy to just like wallow in it Yeah. instead definitely. of being like, wow, like I have things that are outside of this and like looking big picture in my life. There's yeah. more to my life than just this one instance or one moment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm a huge fan of helping other people in my life yeah. know how to help me. <laughs> yeah. You know, like helping people understand how to help me. Um, so that means things like employing a healthy, proactive communication of what I want, what I need, what my boundaries are to the people around me that I need support from, being clear about the kind of support that I need, or being clear in not knowing as well. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes I think it is okay to be like, I'm not sure exactly what I need right now, but like, let me percolate on it or let me think about it and let, yeah. and let you know, or I don't know exactly what I right, want right now, but like, let's start with a hug and then just take it from there. Or let's start with me venting a little bit and then let's take it from there. Um, and that also means if your support is some alone time or just I need some time by myself to process this, also let them know, you know, I think that along with falling prey to kind of these fuzzy definitions of support where we can get mired down in, I want you to support me. I am supporting you. No, you're not supporting me. You know, like kind of mired down in definitions. We can also fall prey to this idea of like, well, you should just know how to support me in this moment, or you should just know what it is that I need. And now it's of like, course, uh... like, of course you don't want to have to be like instructing your partner every single step of the way with every single decision with everything that they need to take care of you. But the fastest way to get what you want from someone is to ask for it. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, mm -hmm. it is okay to be really, concrete i think in asking for what you need it can be con as concrete as like i just want to sit here with you not talking for a little while and then i would love to cuddle with you and i'd love to cry and then i would love to just take a couple hours not talking about it and let's go distract ourselves and then maybe let's talk about it afterwards like yeah it's okay to be that specific about like the kind of support that you need and to be that specific in asking for it yeah um, another thing is to take a moment to do something kind for your partner during this time or even a friend <clears throat> or even a, yeah, a friend yeah. or a relative or someone else. Um, this is something that, that Dedeker's talked about yeah. for a long time of like, when you're feeling down, reach out to someone else and let them know that you think they're great or that you appreciate them or yeah. whatever it is as a way of both kind of paying it forward. But then also it, it like just kind of gets you out of this cycle of being so focused on everything happening to you yeah, and kind of like empowers you to be a positive force in someone else's life. And then somewhat related to that is actually praising your partner for the help that they're giving you and to let them know that you see that effort and you appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, this one's especially important too, if it's not like a little short term thing, if it's not like you ask for support and they give it and you're like, okay, I feel better now. Yeah, I mean, it, if you're it's still, still long, struggling, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, and some people, I mean, you know, have a lot of shit going on at work, for example, for mm -hmm. like a really long period of time, and they're just kind of 
in the weeds with that. Or right. it could be something chronic. Months. It could yeah. be, you know, chronic depression, depression or chronic sure. illness or chronic dealing with yeah. a death or, you know, like really long term things yeah. that you need support on. Yeah. But is to let your partner know that you appreciate the support they are giving you. Yeah. Um, because it, it can be really helpful for them to know that as well. So they know they're on the right track and yeah. that, that what they're doing is helpful. Even if from the outside, they might be like, I must not be doing it right because they're, they're still not feeling better. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. Um, and this also reminds me of like the appreciation part as part of the reconnection in radar. Yeah. So when you're doing your, your radars of like having that time to appreciate each other for the support that you gave and for the listening that you did and like all those sorts of things that, um, Sometimes I think we, we overlook a little bit and we yeah. get upset when we don't have them. So it's important to acknowledge them when we do have them. Right. What do we want the people to take away from all this? Well, <laughs> we gave think? some good ways to like recognize what a supportive relationship is versus a codependent mm-hmm. relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and what like a com- codependent relationship is in general. And then also hopefully like how to recognize a lack of support in your life like the difference between neglect and abuse, Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. how to kind of see what those things are. Yeah, I was kind of thinking about uh, maybe giving people a new word to take home. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So we go. So when we were talking about the idea of like trying, you know, like what is emotional neglect? Um, And, you know, this word we were saying, like, don't get so focused on like, is it emotional neglect or not? Because really what matters is, is this relationship good for you? Like, is this healthy for you? Right? Like, is this, um, you know, is this actually a good relationship for you to be in? And like we talked about way earlier, for one person, a relationship might be great. And to you, it's going to feel super neglectful. Or for another person, a relationship might feel great. And for t- and to you, it would feel super smothering and codependent, right? That this isn't just sort of a universal, like, good or bad. It's about what's right for you. And that reminds me of boundaries, which is something we talk about, right? Of, yeah. you know, kind of what it is that you want or don't want in your life. If like, I'm not willing to be in a relationship where I'm treated in this particular way. Like, that's a boundary. So this is sort of the opposite of that, of saying that, you know, I'm not okay with being in a relationship where I don't get a certain kind of emotional support. And so I was thinking it's not quite a boundary, but it's like a negative boundary. No, Jace, that is a boundary, though. But it's about that you're not okay with not getting something (sighs) as opposed to I'm not okay with something happening. Right. Like a normal boundary is like I'm not... I'm not going to have a discussion with someone who's yelling at me. Right. So it's like, that's my boundary. So I'm going to remove myself from that situation if that happens and, and protect my boundary. But this is like, so I, this is, I'm not going to be in a relationship where someone's not talking good to me. Where where someone's like not (sighs) acknowledging me when I walk in a room or is not, um, allowing me to make my own decisions or something like that. So I was thinking like, I'm not quite sure what it is yet. Is it a nega boundary or a boundary, or a an- anti-boundary, like antimatter. When you have anti-boundaries and boundaries together, my, they explode. <laughs> I my, don't know. <laughs> my problem, my problem, Chase, is that like I feel like people already have a hard time wrapping their head around just boundaries themselves. Well, okay, then this I is like adva- out... this is like grad school level. This is like shit, boundaries three hundred one. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh my goodness. So don't don't worry about na- it. But na- na- n- boundaries noundry. 301 boundaries. Mm. Boundaries. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Well, uh okay. I'm going to I'm just going to say I'm considering making this our ending tagline of every single episode. Okay. Oh, Let yeah. me know what you think. Um as always, please don't weaponize this shit. Mm. Like like literally I want to attach this to every single episode because I'm like okay. please don't take the things that we say and use them to, and like beat for your partners evil. Over. Don't use them for evil. Don't beat your partners over the head with them. Like, yeah. don't weaponize this stuff. Just don't like. <laughs> Thank you. Take this advice, but like, don't use it as like a weird ruler that you want to measure 
you know, as like a yardstick that you're forcing someone else to live up, like forcing someone else to, to live up mm-hmm. to use it as a yardstick for your own, like discernment in relationships and discernment in choosing partners and discernment over whether or not you should stay in a relationship or not. Um, but please, like, I just don't want to hear any stories of someone being like, well, I told my partner that they're not supportive of me because multi Amory says that they need to be doing this, 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 and this. And I'm like, no one wants to be in a relationship with that person well, who's saying those yeah. things. I mean, I've had people run up to me like randomly, you know, at a concert and say like, you saved my relationship. We definitely don't anyone want anyone to do the opposite of that and be like, you ruined my relationship. <laughs> so don't weaponize that shit. That is like my greatest fear. Thank you. Yeah, that's all. Do you think we should append this as a tag? It's kind of a negative tag to end all the episodes. On. It, it, is, it is a little bit. I, I don't know. Well, it's, with this one, I think it's a fine thing to say. It's like a good sentiment to wrap into all of them. And I feel like we do talk about it a fair amount of like taking ownership of your own part in things rather than using it to like define and diagnose someone else. But just please don't, don't use us, use us as a tool, as a weapon on other people or on yeah, your partner. Right. Like we yeah. didn't, we didn't sign up for that. That's true. <laughs> Ain't nobody want that shit. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, and as always, don't weaponize this shit. <laughs> See you next week. Like that could be our like sign off. There you go. We've been trying to come up oh, with no, a okay. sign off for I years. I have another one. Okay. So I feel like there's a couple that like, so first, I think for a while we were definitely repeating like, and remember it is okay to break up with people. Um, right. That's one. I think don't weaponize this shit is another one. And I think another one is the disclaimer of, Remember, if you're in an abusive situation, none of this re- none of this advice matters, and you need to get the hell out. Yeah, mm, because yeah. that's yeah. another one. That's is people being one. like, yeah. I tried to use NVC with my abusive boyfriend, and it didn't work. And I'm like, You're yes, right. You're right. Correct. You're right. It didn't work. Or like, I tried to use the, the Triforce with a situation with my partner who's uh, really emotionally abusive to me, and I'm like, You're right. It's not yeah. going to work. So yeah. I feel Yikes. Like those are all negative things to end out on, but I feel like they're very yeah. true. They yeah. are, yeah. Well, Sometimes yeah. the truth isn't always shiny and pretty. I guess that's, I guess, you know what, though? People are listening to this show and not, you know, just listening to, you know, pop psychology stuff that's like, everything's fine as long as you do X, Y, and Z. No. So mm, I feel like they're all, they already get it. They to understand. A extent. They yeah. know. They're yes, in like, this for is the, the hard though. truths. Jace, you see the good in people and I don't. <laughs> that's our <laughs> difference here. <laughs> Okay. Well, on that note, I'm very interested to hear what emotionally supportive things you do for your partners out there. Um, And also how you, you know, can receive emotional support in a good way. I'm very interested to hear about that. So the best place to share your thoughts with other listeners is on this episode's discussion thread in our private Facebook group group or discord it's a community chat. too yeah community i know one. i was like community oh that's not the word that's <laughs> on here you can get access to these groups and join our exclusive community by going to patreon.com slash multi in addition you can share with us publicly on twitter facebook or instagram you can email us at info at multi leave us a voicemail at 678 M U L T I zero five. Wow, I've I've been doing it in a different key lately. I don't know what <laughs> no, that's I like about. It. It's, change it up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Or you can leave us a voice message on Facebook. Multi Amory is created and produced by Dedeker Winston, Jace Lindgren, and me, Emily Matlack. Our episodes are edited by Mauricio Balvanera. Our social media wizard is Will McMillan. Our production assistant is Nicole Samara. Our theme song is Forms I Know I Did by Josh Nonnen from the Fractal Cave EP. And the full transcript is available on this episode's page on multiamory.com.